What is this? Is something at the door? Hey, that's my tubes. My tubes came in. Yeah, there's some more tubes over here. Ah, that's in the mailbox here. Well, I made a lot of uh, progress here on this room. I got uh, a TV, some radios there. And uh, I cleared a spot. I can actually walk to and actually get to the RCA uh, 143. So let's uh, mosey on over there. Got a mermaid and a double ducker carousel. That's pretty cool. And uh, let's see what it looks like. I haven't looked at this in a really long time. Like, a long time. Okay, get the cover off. There it is. This is what. Uh, this is what the RCA 143 looks like. And this is what I gotta get fixed. And uh, sorry, it's a little dark, but that's the best lighting I got right now. And the cabinet's in pretty good shape, except for the the top. The top is kind of worn. And uh, this, uh, oops. This, um, the varnish there is like crazed on it. That's like the capstone piece. Because this was like their top of the line tabletop they had. So it had the capstone on it. They had a model 128 that didn't have the capstone. But the 143 has the capstone on it. Uh, this is a really old postcard. It's, uh, Franklin D. Roosevelt's, um, convertible with, like, uh, hand controls on to make it, like, run. And I saw this in Hyde Park, New York. But they actually moved this car down to Warm Springs, Georgia. And it was funny, because I saw the same car in Warm Springs, Georgia. And I told the guy, I said, you know, there's a car just like that in Hyde Park, New York. And he says, no, that's the same car. They, they got it down to, like, Warm Springs, Georgia from Hyde Park, New York. But I actually saw that in Hyde Park. And I also saw it in Warm Springs, Georgia. And it's a cool car. You know, the only thing that worries me about this radio... Or one of the things that worries me is um, I hope I got the knobs for it because um, I mean I had the case separate and I got the chassis separate but I can't remember if I got the chassis from the same guy I got the, the cabinet from or whether I got the chassis and the speaker from a different guy and got the cabinet separate I can't remember how I did it. See, there's the speaker that I already took out and kind of tested it like. But I got the chassis for the radio. It's under there. And I've never taken it out. I mean, it's been in the box. It may sound crazy, but it's in the box for like six or seven years. I know it had the tubes in it. I saw that, but I've never taken it out of the box. I don't know if the, the knobs are in the box or not. I have no idea. Okay, now it's time to get cracking. Because I've been negligent here about getting stuff. But I get cracking here, and I gotta order capacitors. And we got like the uh, paper capacitors I gotta order. And I get them from. Uh, JustRadios.com and Dave in Canada is a really great guy. But I like getting the electrolytics from like uh, Newark Electronics or uh, Mousery Electronics. And uh, I printed this out from uh, NostalgiaAir.org. 
and um, it's pretty good. I mean, I could read the stuff, but it's better if you uh, go on the online and uh, and check it out online. Yeah, you could download something like this from uh, nostalgiaair.org. I figure everyone knows about nostalgiaair.org anyway, but uh, it's kind of better getting the parts list than reading it online here. And clockwise. And we, whoops. We can make it as big as we want so we can read it. Like the space age here. Interestingly, they call the capacitors capacitors. They call the tuning capacitor a condenser. A three gang variable tuning condenser. But they used to call all capacitors condensers. But for some reason, they stuck the tuning capacitor is still a condenser. And the capacitors are capacitors. So this is what I wanted to show you guys. If I want to order an axial lead 10 microfarad uh, electrolytic, aluminum bodied electrolytic, uh, four fifty volts. Four fifty volts. And let's just apply the filters here. This is at this is at Mauser. I'll show you what comes up. Get a nice classic one there from Vichy Sprague. And Sprague's been around since like uh, like old as dirt. Uh, a little pricey, seven dollars and thirty-eight cents for a axial lead capacitor. Uh, it's a twenty percent tolerance. Looks like most of them are twenty percent tolerance. Uh, take a look at the data sheet. It says here, uh, eighty-five degrees C axial lead. Ideal for uh, TV sets, auto radios, radio phone combination, electronic testing equipment. Okay, what I can't find is um, the lifespan in hours on Mauser. So we have to look on uh, Newark, see if it's on Newark. Now here's uh, Vichy Sprague. Uh, same thing, it's a little cheaper, $6.15. Anyway, they don't have it in stock anyway. But interestingly, on the Newark site, if you scroll down, I can actually find the lifetime hours. Lifetime hours is 2,000 hours at 105 degrees C, and that's pretty hot. I mean, 105 degrees C, I think, is about 185 Fahrenheit. So if you do calculations and whatnot, then you can see that 2,000 hours is considerable, but it's $6.15 each, and Newark ain't got them. And back on Mouser's site now, and I'm going to select radial cap instead of axial caps. Uh, apply my filter, 450 volts. Apply my filter, and actually I could apply apply the low life here too. I get my filter on here. I'll show you something. Yeah, you apply your filters at Mauser, and uh, I'll use my uh, this little screwdriver here. 
sir on NikaCon. I think I'm saying that right. This new product, aluminum electrolytic capacitor, leaded 450 volts, 10 microfarad, 20 percent. Uh, got them in stock. Dollar uh, fifty-two. So I'm gonna click. I'm gonna show you this. Let me show you this. Don't go anywhere. Here we go. Data sheet. Okay, these are ra these are ra radial leads. They're not axial, where it comes out each side, but they're radial. But if you look here, it says here, long life product, low life, ten thousand to twenty thousand hours. Now you get upwards to twenty thousand hours at a hundred and five degrees C. And you want to get the ones that say they're radiated at 805 degrees C. Because they use better electrolyte in these than the ones that are rated at 85 degrees C. And you see they're 10,000 to 20,000 hours. You know? And that's because they're putting all the technology now into the radial leads. Because they go into printed circuit boards. And the axial leads are like going the way of the dodo bird. So I would strongly suggest, and it's up to anyone who wants to order them, but I'm going to order the radial leads, even though they make it a little harder for me to use them, maybe. Uh, I haven't used them before. But I think it's going to make it a little bit more difficult for me to use them. But even so, I'm getting... Up to 20,000 hours life at 105 degrees C. And that's at the higher working voltages. The higher working voltages are uh, higher hours. So I looked it up and it's somewhere between 12,000 hours and uh, 20,000 hours. But even so, even if it was 12,000 hours, it's still a lot better than 2,000 hours for... Uh, the Vichy Sprague unit that cost a lot more money. So that's why I wanted to show you guys. This is a superior product. And I'd rather put a superior product into the radio that has tubes and it gets hot and heats up and all that stuff than putting a, like a more inferior product because I want the thing to last like a long time. And if I want to restuff, uh, Put that and restuff an electrolytic uh, can. Uh, I think the radial might be even easier to use if I want to restuff a can. So I thought that's interesting to show everybody. Yeah, I'm going to order the Nikecon ones. This new product, and they're a buck fifty-two each. That's not a bad price, really, and they're really good. I mean, they're good. That's a good name, Nikacon. I saw, um, oh, who's his name? Uh, Bob, uh, Bob Anderson used Nikacon in one of his projects. And, uh, they got Panasonic here, too. They got some Panasonics that got along, uh, like here, a long lifespan too. I don't know if that's the one. But uh, that's all that Bob Anderson used uh, Nikacon. So I'm going to try a Nikacon, you know? Yeah, I think I'm going to get everything else from uh, JustRadios.com because I have really good results with uh, all their uh, replacement capacitors. They keep all the old timey values too. So I like getting them here, over over here, and I'll get like 450 working volts. So that's it. I'm gonna get cracking ordering stuff. Uh, talk to everyone later. Bye. Have a good day. Snowcat says it's snowing outside.